That's got to be one of my most favorite reels, the one on moon and sun related spells. And why is that? Because it made me think. If my reel made you think, then the purpose has been achieved because it's exactly what I want. And now I assume you have questions? Uh, yeah, I suppose you're ready for them then. As always, yes. So we have sun and moon spells, right? Right. Why don't we have star and other celestial body spells? That's a good question. The reason why we don't have any other celestial body spell is because uh, the kind of light that is required has to be either very close or very, very high. And it has to be natural. And that is not available anywhere but either the moon or the sun. If we have to illuminate a spell, we use a candle or a whole lot of candles. But artificial light is not permitted. Uh, a low form of light is not permitted. And of course, darkness means that it isn't light magic in the first place. So there you go. You have your answer. Could you cite a few examples of deities for both moon and sun spells? Uh, for uh, many, all the moon spells, we have a lot of Wiccan gods and goddesses. We have the Lord Shiva, the Green Man, um, we have uh, the goddess Hecate, we have uh, the goddess Lakshmi, of course, Ma Durga, uh, we have uh, the Triple Goddess, we have Gaia, so on and so forth. For the sun god, uh, for the sun spells, we have uh, the Egyptian god Ra. In fact, there are many spells in which uh, both the moon and the sun gods are used. But that really depends on the nature of the spell. These deities, you can't just start working on them overnight. You need to establish a relationship with them. So, and every spellcaster has a relationship with not every deity, but with a few that the spellcaster has worked with and over a period of time, that relationship has developed into uh, a mutual admiration, love and affection, and of course, trust. The deities that we work with the most are also related to the, uh, to the Hindus, of course, in terms of the gods and goddesses. As in, for money, we don't just use Lady Fortuna, which is from a Roman, a Roman Greek uh, background, but also the goddess Lakshmi and Mahalakshmi. For knowledge, uh, we don't just work with Roman and Greek gods and goddesses, we also work with Ma Saraswati. And uh, for protection, of course, the goddess Hecate is there and also Ma Kali and uh, the Lord Shiva for strength. Uh, we also look at um, Hanumanji. We also look at, uh, you know, uh, the green man, so on and so forth. So remember, to establish a relationship, <coughs> it takes a long period of time. And once you do, you have to be very particular who you're working with and what is the reason behind it. What kinds of spells are conducted by day or night, respectively? A lot of people have misconceptions, perhaps because of lack of, lack of information, and that's what we are doing here, trying to give you more information and educating you. Some people think that if you are conducting a, sp a spell in the night, it's got to be dark. No. Remember the term occult means hidden. So spells that are cast that don't have to be you know, uh, thrown out in the outside and broadcasted to the entire world, those are occult spells. They are also spells which are dark, but all the occult spells that we work with at Rakhaina are done in the night. They are usually done in the weekends or on certain days of the week, but always after 6.30 p.m. or sundown. Depends. So, uh, there is no such thing that if you work by day, then it's a good spell. And if you uh, work by night, then it's a dark spell, right? The spells that are conducted during the day are spells that are followed by certain practitioners of the occult. But that is not what Drakaina does because we work more with the hidden aspects. The process of magic is not known to anybody from beginning to end, but the fact that you focus on the process internally through vibes, 
state of mind, etc., it gets that much more easier to reach the end of the process. Can a spellcaster use both the moon and the sun in the same spell? What do you think? Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure of my answer. <laughs> if you are going to take one form of light energy and use it for your spell casting work, if you combine that with another form of light energy and then use it for spell casting work, it has to be two different forms, not from the same form. For example, I cannot use a tea light candle and a tapering candle together for a spell casting work. It just won't work. You can experiment if you want, but it won't. Similarly, you can use the light of the moon and candles. That'll work. But if you use the light of the sun and the moon, then the spell won't work. So you need, if you need to use light, it has to be from different natural sources. I know some of you think, but candle is not a natural source. Candle is a very essential part of spell casting because the, the part where the flame is, that is identified as the spirit energy, which remote controls the entire, uh, the entire process of the spell from the eyes of the person for whom the spell has been cast. So I hope I've answered your question. What kind of spells does Drakaina follow? The one boosted by the moon or the sun? Here at Drakaina, we follow spells which are cast by the moonlight. And why is that? Could you explain? Because the designs that have been created from the shelf of Drakaina by yours truly were all done keeping the time 6.30 p.m. or later in mind and each incantation, each oil, each herb, each spell has been spell casted with either moon water or moon magic uh, and we call her Lady Luna. The magic of the moon is phenomenal when it comes to spell casting and the, what, I, what I love about, um, about moon magic is that it's versatile, it works with every form of light magic that I have encountered and uh, of course the best part is you see the, the sun spells that energy is scattered when the sun comes up there is light illuminated it, it illuminates everything it's everywhere but when there is moonlight if you notice on a full moon night right when the moon uh, when the rays of the moon fall wherever you're standing it's illuminated but there are certain places that it gets darker and darker and darker so the place where it is illuminated is where the spell is cast that's how we work Thank you for answering all the questions. You're very welcome. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them in the comments below. I will see you at Rakhaina. Thank you for watching.